This is Mr. Impact Wrestling and so Moose, and you're listening to the Irish Whip. Hookers? Hookers and Coke? Hookers and Coke, man. You're the only pro wrestler I know that wants to do the shit in the morning. Yeti, you're a f***ing moron. Put it this way, I think Sammy Callahan might as well just change his name to Invader I want to know why. Like, he can dodge any question. Like, I'll tell anyone that. You can tell me the f***ing but I, I'm going to ask specific questions. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. WrestlingNewsSource.com. For all the rest of you yahoos are out there dilly dilly you little wankers, we're actually receiving real wrestling news. This is Brett screwed Brett. I'm Who are you to, to, to doubt El Dandy? Because this guy's a serious professional. Brett screwed Brett. Hold two arm bar. Hey, get a nice shot of the brand new Mr. and Mrs. Hunter Hurst Helmsley. I hate you. I hate you. I hate your hat. I hate your t-shirts. I hate your wristbands. I hate your shoes. I hate your music. I hate the C-Nation. I hate everything that you stand for. So does rule. Yeah, they do. (laughs) Dude, you know what my best, you know what one of my best, like, memories in wrestling is? Some of the best stuff I love in wrestling is fucking road trips. I uh, dislike road trips very much. I dislike them immensely because so much thing. It's it just it, there's everything's unplanned. Nothing works out. Everybody wants to do different things. You go eat someplace, but that person wanted to eat there, but they wanted this, but that person wanted to go over here, yeah. and this person wants to see you for fifteen minutes, so come over here. So all in all, like road trips, I get it. Like you need another road trip to get away from your road trip. That's we got Woody and uh. We got Woody and Bobby D in the chat already. Laurie's in the chat already. What's going on, guys? Dude, I I don't know if this is going to be a long... Me and Josh both got some stuff going on tonight. I don't know how long we're going to go. The wheel is big. The wheel is huge. There's almost 50 names on the wheel. Um, Thanks to our buddies over at WrestlingNewsSource.com partnering up with us on the Free Fig Friday. Hashtag Free Fig Friday, guys. Uh, And... um, we have fast lane coming up, so we'll definitely run down the fast lane card. But there's not a whole lot to that either. Uh, I'm Elvis curious in the see. chat. What's going on, Elvis? I'm uh, I'm curious to see if we actually, when we say that, like every like it's just it's. I, I'm so happy that we continue to do this podcast, and I guess that's the, the one thing that I want to get over on this more than anything else is that no matter what happens, no matter how shitty life is, is like we continue to try to, to get this done because. People are counting on us. People counting on us to be there. People count on us to to do what we do. And we, I don't want to disappoint people. And I think that's the hardest part. Is like you know things happen. I'm on the road right now. I'm doing this from inside yep. of a car. You know, I'm 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 doing a podcast on the road away from nobody. And I get it. It's 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 tough. And you know, it's tough on me. It, and it's tough on everybody. It's, you're it's on the tough road on those. in a state that has like one line for internet too. Oh, dude. It, but it's uh, I try to explain to people like Montana is, is great in so many ways, but it took me three hours, four, three and a half hours to get to this place. That's so it's yeah, because well, it's a huge state. What up, Mike? Yes. Hey, Mike, give my um, God, thoughts and prayers to Raina, please. Thank you. I won't put it out there, but uh, what's going on, Mike? Thank you for checking us out. So, yeah, we'll run through fast lane, uh, we'll spin the wheel. Uh, we got a really cool, I think the ad is going in this week's episode, so if you're listening, if you're not listening live, um, you'll hear the ad. If you're listening live, and you do a keto-friendly diet, and you um, carb-free, that type of thing, check out Magic Spoon Cereals. Magicspoon.com slash T-I-W, promo code T-I-W will save you five bucks. Uh, but listen to our mid-roll. Our mid-roll will have the whole ad in there. Um, it's It's pretty cool stuff. It's good. I, I got to try it. I, I got to send some out to Josh. I have a box set up um, to send out. Uh, so It's amazing how we decided who got what boxes of cereal. Well, I screwed up, by the way. Like, so I'm getting, the, I'm getting the Frosted Flakes and Cheerios. You're getting fruity and... Oh, I'm good with fruity, dude. Yeah, I'm so getting, good with fruity. You're getting fruity and cocoa. Oh. And I, I opened up peanut butter by accident. Oh, that's no accident. You did that on purpose. You <laughs> or your father opened that up on purpose. 
Oh, but either that or Shane. Oh, uh, Shane. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kojnake, Shane, uh, otherwise known as the Prince, uh, which is part of uh, the tag team uh, with Brittany from AEW, um, Lady Frost. Shane's a huge peanut butter dude. Like he puts peanut butter on everything. I don't think I mean, there's anything that Shane doesn't put peanut butter on. Kurt, Kurt Kilberg, who's a new name I've been seeing on the wheel the past couple of weeks, showing up in the chat room too. What's up, Kurt? What's up, Tommy Flynn? Kurt, Kurt won one of our figs. I can't remember which one of the figs that he won. I think it was one of the Taker figs. Oh, or... okay, cool. So uh, it was one of the one of the ones that. Uh, it, it, yes, absolutely. It's, it's, it it's funny. Like I know the names as I see them on the wheel. Now, let's see. What do we got, dude? Have you seen? Have you looked at the matches for the um, pay per view? Do you, do you know what how I feel about Fastlane? Let me preface this. Do you know how many fast lanes I've watched in my life? Zero. None. Do you know why? Because it's Armageddon. Yes, it means absolute. I mean, I can. Yeah, think it's of- it's like a paper. It's the buffer in between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. But I think this one actually has to be good for the WWE sake. Well, like you said, isn't this their first pay per view on Peacock before the, Mania? Yes, this is the one on Peacock where they're going to test. This is the test of the Peacock Network. This is the test because if you remember when the WWE Network first came out and the first pay per view was one of the big ones, um, it crashed constantly. Um, Dude, we know some some independent companies that have suffered this because of some massive. Yeah. Massive cards that they put together that they didn't expect the magnitude of people streaming those portions of that. How about um they just announced Hulk Hogan Hulk Hogan and Bobby Lashley are um they they're hosting an event at WrestleMania for the WWE. It's like a pop culture thing. Did you just say Hulk Hogan and Bobby Lashley? <laughs> yes. They're doing mm. some kind of pop culture thing WrestleMania weekend, and those two are the, the those are the two people that WWE thought would be great hosts together. I don't understand that at all. I don't get it. I I get why they use Hogan because Hogan. I I don't agree with using Hogan. Let me let me clarify that. But I get why they use Hogan because they're in Florida, and he brings name value. But. At the end of the day, he's a piece of crap. Dude, let me ask you this, and this is a serious question, man, for real. Like, do you think pro wrestling fans or sports entertainment fans give a shit about whether or not he's racist? I think some do. I think they really. Um, if you were, if you, let me, so I'm gonna try. I'm, I'm gonna. Here's my follow up question. I'm gonna try and nail you down. If you were to put a percentage on it, as far as people who give a shit. On whether or not Hulk Hogan is a racist or not, when it comes to sports entertainment fans, what do you think of percentages? Um, that care, like that we're like he's the ultimate racist, like he just doesn't care. He thinks he's above the law, like he's just that dude. He's bubble the love sponge. He's drink because JP's young. Like, do you do people know that part of it, or they're just sports entertainment fans and they don't see that? So he's Hogan. Um, I think people care enough right now. I do. I agree. Um, I do. It's. I do. I feel bad for Bobby Lashley in this position. Yeah. I do. I really do. Yep. I mean, yep. I understand. I understand the whole WrestleMania and he's your champion and all that, but it kind of eliminates the whole stuff. You all get doing. drunk tonight, huh? You all are getting drunk tonight, and Tommy's going to be sipping a soda all night. All because of you? Is that the problem? Yes. Let's see. Well, I, I Vince Fastlane Russo just, going I, into the Hall of Fame too. Yes, I think Russo should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, no way, no way. I know Eric Bischoff, but did you say Vince Russo? Yeah. Shut. Oh no, it's Bischoff going in this year, isn't it? It is Bischoff. <sighs> My heart just stopped for a second, man. What? Do almost, you not, almost do you not think shit. Russo should be in? Uh, no, I don't. You don't think there's a spot in there for Vince Russo? No. 
I don't oh, think sorry, it's not. Um, Mike just corrected me. It's not Lashley. It's Titus O'Neil. Oh, same thing. I don't care. Yeah, it, it, but it yeah, it's putting one of their guys who they're trying to build up into a huge spot in a very weird spot. Well, if you're gonna, eat, this is corporate line. Control, <laughs> toe the corporate line. It's toe Bobby corporate D said line he's or... getting blasted. <laughs> Ray, um, Tommy Flynn just said Ray Mysterio should be in the Hall of Fame. He he will be once he retires. Once he you know. He stops. He doesn't have to stop for long, as we all know. <laughs> look at Edge. Look at um, look at. Why Flair. do you think? Why do you? I, I don't. And this is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a pretty bold statement, man. I don't think Vince Russo would be half of what he is without Jeff Jarrett, at all. I'm just like, showing off the plaque. I really. I guess that's why I feel the way that I feel is because I don't see. I don't see. I don't see Vince Russo without Jeff Jarrett. Without that one moment? Is that what you no. mean? Well, not not just Bash the Beach, dude. Not just that. But, like, uh, take TNA into it. Take If I take the lump sum, yeah, I, I get the whole WWE Hall of Fame, Bischoff, and whatever, blah, blah, blah. But um, Elvis uh, said he, he didn't mean Russo. He means Vince the boss. Vince McMahon should be in the Hall of Fame. And I agree, uh, but McMahon will never put himself in. So that won't happen until he passes away. Uh, Vince McMahon will be posthumously. He'll he, that all. That's a given. <laughs> Mike, you know? Mike Farrell says, fuck Hulk and fuck Russo. They're both cunts. Well, you have it. I mean, that's and not Rucka, our word. Rucka so. just dropped in to say fuck Hogan. <laughs> 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 that's what I mean. It's uh, it's I guess it's the, the difficult part for me is I see the corporate line, I see towing the corporate line, I see how that works when it comes to money and investors, and you will do this. You sign this contract, you are required to, um, no matter who. It's just diff. I mean, it's just difficult when it comes to. Well, I, I guess personally. Um, I do there the whole defense between there's a there's a difference between Hulk Hogan and Terry Balea. Like I wasn't, you can't prosecute me because I wasn't uh, Terry Balea at that time. I was Hulk Hogan. I mean, come on, dude. Like yeah, we all yeah. know that we all know that that's one and the same, right? Right. It's not like you have multiple personalities. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to think of like an actor. Um. Matt Damon can't go out and kill someone and said he did it because he was Jason Bourne. Exactly. It just it doesn't work. And that, to, to me, that, that that defense for the whole the trial and all of that, yeah, I, the WWE is a dirty company. So, dude. The I, I WWE just say, is dirty. Like they they will sweep a lot of the rug to make a buck. And I that's a lot. Say they will this. Like, you asked how many people care about the Hogan thing. Our chat room just blew up with people saying F him. And... But though, to be honest, I mean, we're a, niche, we're a niche community. We're people that care. We're invested in this product. We're in, but are there, you know, the, the 12-year-olds that see, you know, Hulk Hogan, you know, casually on the network, and then they go delve they, in? Do they, they don't do they know go who Hulk Hogan this? is. I just don't think he was ever anything other than a leg drop. Yeah. And it, you know, Timber, when she watched that, I showed her the Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, you know, and he, that was the build. The whole, the, the whole build was to see if Hogan could just body slam Andre. And that's what, it, otherwise, the whole match was just horrid. It was, it was grotesque in all manners of aspect other than the psychology behind it. And... Anyway, fuck Hogan. Uh, <laughs> fast lane. Do you have the card up? Like, uh, I do. Are we gonna Are we gonna predict this thing? Because I don't. I yeah. Um, I, I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna at least get eighty percent on this. How about you know what one is screwing me up? Which one? there's one match that I I don't know how I can predict. I know. It's I think I know what's gonna one. happen. Yeah. Uh, Alexa Bliss versus Randy Orton. I think Bray Wyatt comes back in Cross Orton the match. Or Alexa Bliss does some crazy stuff and like burns him on fire or 
either that or he's burning her on fire. Well, she continually be has been able to do <laughs> whatever that command and make him puke up black whatever. So my I'm, Alexa just responded to Alexa Bliss. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna say Alexa Bliss on that, but obviously not clean. There's gonna be some. She's gonna do some of her voodoo. How she do the voodoo that she do? It would be there's cool no, if like Papa Shango came out with her and Bray Wyatt. There's no stipulation on that match, right? At all? No, nope, just an intergender match. Hmm. WWE doesn't do intergender matches. Nope. They do not do intergender matches. So I I don't even see this match happening. I think it's just a publicized match to get some peacock buys and then this match doesn't even happen. That's Just interesting. Saying. That's Just interesting. Saying. So I'm I'm You're not saying a no I, contest of some sort then. Absolutely. No it just has right. there's has never been has there uh, has there been a true intergender match in the WWE yet? I don't believe so. There probably Fact was check. like Harvey Whippleman versus somebody or other. Well, I mean uh, let's talk 2000 and beyond let's talk about post china let's just look we we could use that pc post china post china (laughs) um then you get right uh, another one that's this is going to be the match i think that steals the show the bro kick versus the claymore oh man seamus versus drew mcintyre Well, uh, yes, probably going to be a pretty cool match um, since it's been a long so, time. Such a workup for it, and those guys do know each other. They've been around each other for a long time. What are the stipulations in this match again? Just a single there... match from what I can see. Um, the, I don't see. I don't see Drew McIntyre losing this match. I don't. I don't either. But I mean, I could. I also could see um, Sheamus winning. So it's it's tough. Hey, what's up, Karen? Thank you. Appreciate you stopping in to say hi. I know you're busy. Hello, Karen. <laughs> Elvis Martinez. <laughs> what was the point of the green slime on Raw? It was like watching Nickelodeon. I think that was just the Alexa Bliss stuff, buddy. Yeah, just funny. Um, it's the. It's don't. I don't. Don't. DX. Let's just call it. It was DX. Say it, JP. It was DX because it, it was green. That could be. Uh, <laughs> the next up, we got the Intercontinental. Um, it is uh, Big E versus Apollo Cruz for the Intercontinental Championship singles match. Uh, Big E still has a belt. Um, yes, I... Big E is the champ. Uh, Apollo Cruz. Uh, you know what? Like, I think they could put they could put all the belts into that group. I think Big E loses because I, uh, and then the Hurt Business gets a belt back since the Hurt yeah. Business just lost their if two you, belts. But I, if you think about it, I think the Hurt Business could get all of the belts back. And that, that like, how dominant would they be? How much? I think that would be a I, good move, right and wise. Can we just uh, go on? I, and can I we normally just... don't like that when they put all the um when a company puts all the belts in one faction, but can I we... think that's the right move. Can we just go on record, JP, and say that I called I called this hurt the business until they fucking all had the belts because that's what I wanted was all of them to have a belt and for MVP to just kind of do what he's doing now and be that manager. That manager that yeah. is non-existent, yes. that non-exist, that is, that doesn't really exist outside of Paul Heyman. That you could still buy into, he could legit go. Like if he needs to, he'll legit rip his shit and go. Uh, other, I can't think of another manager out there um, right now. Uh, WWE specific. I'm thinking. I'm not going like Selena Arena, Delorenta, and all the other happy horse shit, but. So that's really dedicated because he's not in ring anymore. Uh, he's, I think he's done what he needed to do and put over who he needed to put over to get where they needed to get. So I really think that Montana he's folks, done, that's another trick by. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? I just I want him to be a manager. Is that some big sky? Yeah. I have, no, that's some Yellowstone right there. <laughs> uh, Elvis King says it should be uh, Elvis Martinez. It should be Sheamus if, but it should be if Sheamus wins, he's added to the WrestleMania match, which that would be a cool step. Not gonna happen. Um, like it though. And then, do you like how it's become so confident in my picks, JP? I do, and you're right more often than you, what it used to be. <laughs> you actually removed, learned. I feel like you've gone forward and I've gone back. I have removed uh, all emotion from these matches. I got Apollo Cruz. Um, yes. Then you got. Um, I'm, I'm Apollo Cruz as well. Then you got the uh, singles match for the WWE Universal Champion. The winner of the match between Edge and Jey Uso on the March 19th, 2021 SmackDown will be the special guest enforcer. I'm... So whoever wins between Uso and Edge. Um, and I'm Say that again? Guess... Hold on. So... Hold on. Hold on. Say that stipulation again and then repeat this match because I don't want to laugh out loud before. I, the win, the winner of the match between Edge and Jey Uso on the March nineteenth episode of SmackDown, will be the special guest enforcer. And then the universe, this is the universal title: it's Roman Reigns versus Daniel versus Bryan. Versus Daniel Bryan. Ooh. I think. Do, do you? Okay, before before we answer this, just I'm going to give you a scenario, okay? Because this is how my mind works, and it's this is me projecting right so fast lane can usually end in one of two things like really good booking for uh, wrestlemania or really shitty booking for wrestlemania in a lot of ways so do you foresee edge uh being the one or being able to be the one that takes roman down for a bit and makes a little bit of a run again or is this more of an instance of um we get a a possible um, not main event, but a tag team match with Daniel Bryan and Edge against Jey Uso and uh, Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, rather than a one on one for the belt with Edge, which is oh, I mean, he's, he's he's our age, man. He's fucking old when it comes to this. So I don't think Edge is the one to win the championship, but I do think Edge is the one to lose in that championship match and make Roman Reigns the ultimate heel. Um. I, I just think Edge has that power more Oof. than if he had the title. Do you, so you see Edge making this a run? I don't see him winning. I don't. See, I see. Yeah, who do I don't see. see the, who, do, who do you see being the special enforcer for this match? Did they just, Uso. Yeah, they just did some stuff between Uso and Daniel Bryan, didn't they? Yes. So yes. I think it's got to be Uso because he's got stuff between both of them. Yes. So and then which way does he go? And it leaves you questioning that through the whole match. And then at the end, he Pearl Harbor somebody, boom, boom, boom. Well, plus you can take into account that you don't want, you don't want to put Edge in another instance where he could get hurt. I'll bet you there's I mean, a guaranteed ref bump in this match, though. Not not the enforcer, but uh, the ref. Whoever the ref is bumps, gets knocked out, and Uso has to do the three count. And does yeah. the – he either does – the quick, or he goes, or it's the one. Why do you, why do you, why do you do the why do you do a hand count that uh, it and do the slow one two three instead of doing a slow one two three count with your hand? What's the difference? Because uh, I can't, I'm not looking at myself right now, <laughs> so uh, the one, that count right. The one two two. And then it never hits three. three. <laughs> As opposed to. <laughs> that was it's four. One or the other. Good job. I can only no, imagine I... what that looked like to the chat. <laughs> uh, I'm, yeah, J- I'm picking Jey Uso in this match. That's, that's, uh, you, I'm, I'm Uso, solid with that one. So Jey Uso wins and he's the enforcer, but who wins between, um, who wins between Edge and Roman? Uh, Roman? In, 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 you're making me pick a Mania match right now. I mean, who picks? Who wins between Roman and Daniel? Roman. 
Okay, I agree with that. Both Probably. both parts of that actually. Now, this I'm, one. I'm, 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 the I reason think this works, JP. This one. The reason this works is because I'm not thinking. Uh, I'm thinking as a writer and not as an invested um, WWE universe. I think we're going to be split on this one. The next one, and this is the last match that I have listed, is the tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. You got Nia, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler as the Shayna Baszler as the champs with Reginald, who screws everything up. And they're going up against the two girls with R's in their names. Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair. <laughs> you, uh, I did that on purpose. You're picking Shayna and I, aren't you? No, I'm picking Sasha and B- Bianca. Oh, that's logic. That's a logical pick for me. I think that's a good team. I, I would love to see those two get a run together because you look at what the run between. The run with Sasha and Bailey did for both Sasha and Bailey at the time, or um, and like, boy, like where? Sh- Imagine where Bianca Belair ends up at the end of that run. The attitude and the amount of entertainment, and this is no shit. Like I don't, I've never made this comparison, and I'm a huge Iconics fan. I don't think I could imagine a, a more charismatic like a couple individuals like Shawn Michaels and Triple H type shit like they could get they could get to that level if they're willing to you know what we got now though we got what? one thing to do before the wheel are we gonna talk about cereal no no well uh, that'll happen in one of the commercials oh we already talked about cereal god that, I can't wait to eat that that's what she said quality it's quality man it, it's Delicious. delicious i honest to god like it that that's magic, what I talking about like, magic I look, spoon cereal it really tastes like um like the the name brand like cereals um it, it's, a it's crazy yeah it's like you know we we're talking we you were, we are harassing each other about barbecue the other night right and then i went out and made some killer burgers with some local beef to me, and it was lean, dude. It was lean, lean. And I, like, See, seared them. Lean, and I you know what a lean it, burger is? It's a steak. If I want a steak, I'm going to make a steak. If I want a burger, it's like a 75, 25, 80, 20. No, no. Like, it's, it's here. If I'm, when I make you this burger, dude, it's it's not like a steak. It's more like a, a nice piece of grilled meatloaf in your mouth. <sighs> See? I just made you hungry, didn't I? And then I'll make my burger, and you'll be so disappointed in your own. <laughs> uh, don't worry. I disappoint so many people on my own. I don't need to disappoint you myself don't. any more than I already do. <laughs> All right. Listen, we're, in, we're 26, 27 minutes in, guys. Um, so I want to tell you guys about a product, of course. Today's podcast is presented by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Provide a podcasters with the flat rate for ad space, so you always know how much you're getting. When you include an ad from Podgo, apply today to become a member and immediately be connected with advertisers that fit your audience. That's podgo.co at p-o-d-g-o dot c-o. And be sure to add our podcast, The Irish Whip, and the How Did You Hear About Us? pod your section of the application yeah make sure when you guys go and if you do I, I, just go fill out the application put our information in there um it doesn't matter if you're getting 10 downloads or 100 downloads or a thousand downloads like they're just they're there to help out uh and if you can mon- start to monetize your podcast that's it's a it's a really cool way to get your foot in the door um and to learn what it's like to do this like we this is challenging, man. This is always challenging for us. And I think the reason we do it live is because it's, uh, we don't need the edits. We don't want to edit. We don't, we just, there's enough, there's enough of us and enough of I pro wrestling so out there that we can. I, we don't need to, man. Elvis Martinez just said, Josh and JP for the podcast, all the fame. <laughs> oh, tell that to Gabe Sapolsky. 
<laughs> oh, there's only so many people that I, you know get what that I joke. want. I want a pod, <laughs> I want a podcast with Bobby D and Tommy. Yeah, I want to see I, that. Like we want to, I want to make that happen. I could see that happening. I think you guys would, you know. So. Let's see. I have. Is that it? Wheel. That's that's the fast lane, dude. That's fast that's, lane. That's, that's it. it. It's like five matches. Do you want to take a minute? And I I know you haven't. Um, you probably have you watched? Did did you watch any AEW this week? I did not. Okay. Well, let me uh, uh, let me speak to AEW as we get ready to spin this wheel and like send everybody out again. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting us. Um, apologize again for for being so short and the brevity of the episode, but really what it is, is this coronavirus has been brutal on a lot of us, and the shit that JP and a lot of us have gone through in this last year and some odd months is is deep, and it's it's been um, on all accounts so serious on so many levels um, that this is our outlet, and I, I, I just am, I look forward to this day, I look forward to this hour, I look forward to spinning the wheel, I look forward to sending shit to the Haddocks boys on a regular basis yes. to put smiles on their faces, oh. and, you know, it's sometimes it does feel like a job, and that's when it sucks, but it, it's, we're, for me... We're recording an episode next week, we're recording an interview next week, too. Uh, I am, man, the, the way that this happens... Do you want to tell them to, who it is? It's a very good professional wrestler. That's the only um, hint. That but I do we want to tell in. them who it is? No, it's a very good professional wrestler. That's all I. That's all they need to know. Just it's tell not... them who it is. <laughs> no, dude, it's just a, a a very good professional wrestler. That's it. But who is it? Doesn't matter. This is uh, all he... Josh has told me about this too. Is that hey, we're interviewing a very good professional wrestler next week? That's literally all I know. That's it. I can tell you that he is um, world famous. Um, has worked as uh, a masked wrestler at times, um, is featured um, in a new IWTV series that's coming out. Uh, so it's just a very good professional wrestler, dude. That's it. But who is like you got to tell me who it is before we interview him so I can have questions ready. It's not Anthony Green. No, he never wrestled in a mask. It's not Christian Casanova. Again, never wrestled in a mask. It's not Randy Carver. <sighs> never wrestled. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, guys, but it's a very good professional wrestler. And what I can tell you, what I do know from what Josh has informed me of, is that this is going to be a fun interview. And this is going to go back. Dude, it's going to be one of those. It's going to be. In all honesty, those... I know who it is. This is going to be something that goes back through my adult fanhood of pro wrestling. Yes. It goes back to our roots in pro wrestling. It goes back to um, why we do what we do and why we continue to do it and why uh, when uh, people that are, you know, a, a very good professional wrestler, when they make it. Um, He's been brought up on this so many times. Absolutely. Uh, Solo Darling, if you listen to our interview with Solo Darling, uh, she had a huge crush on this uh, individual that yes. uh, is a very good professional wrestler. I want to know so, how old he is. The age is irrelevant when you're as fucking nostalgic as this man is. Right? I mean, I mean, yeah. You, that's... Elvis, do you want uh, Vampiro? I'm sure would come on here when yeah, would like. Yes. Elvis, uh, that'll happen. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy Flynn's hands in that wheel. <laughs> this is the the thirty to the thirty minute mark is always right. that's the Elvis. That's the, so that's Elvis, it. Elvis wants to, us to give him a hint on his finisher, and then said CM Punk. You know what I'll say? It's not CM Punk. He's closer to CP Monk. <laughs> Bobby oh, yeah, D talking dude. to Leo about coming on. Oh yeah, Leo. I'd love that. Leo. Leo would be fun. <laughs> Elvis is taking taking some good guesses, saying um, Christopher Daniels. It could be Daniels. It could be Daniels fits that criteria. He's a very good professional wrestler, well known. Uh, it goes throughout my adulthood. He's been a pro wrestler that whole time. He's wrestled under a mask as Curry Man. 
That could be. Uh, it's not El Generico. No. Um, let's see. Who else is it not? Um, man. I it's just going to be a lot. It's just going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be one you guys don't want to miss. It, it, uh, the cool thing is, is that now with the ability with StreamYard is that we can still do a show like this. Um, we can have the interview yeah. up and we can pop up the interview uh, and let it happen. Uh, and yes. That's the, I think the most and, fun that I'm going to have uh, that we're going to start to have with this is that we're going to start having some individuals on um, on the podcast that people are, are it's going to turn some heads and we're going to have some fun, some fun times. Uh, our goal is to get these people seen that may not be seen. Um, if it's someone that you know, so if there's, if we have on a guest, like someone brought up Vampiro earlier, get a guest like Vampiro on, that's for us. That's yeah. someone that we looked up to as a kid that we wanted to have on and have the chance to have a conversation with that we've become friends with now. Nikolai Volkov. But, no, no, that would be awesome. But if we get on somebody that's like a, a, a independent guy, that's for us too because we want to get to know that person and see what their goals are and where they want to go. But that's also to introduce them to new fans. So when we get someone on like that, guys, make sure you go on and follow their Facebook, their Twitter, check out their IWTV stuff, uh, things to that because it's uh, it's really cool. And I think this interview is going to get a big push from WrestleNewsSource.com too, so that'll be a cool thing. It's it's huge and it's impactful if you think the reach that um, wrestling news source has for an independent wrestler when it comes to you know eighty plus thousand on Twitter and over a half a million on Facebook that in itself is I mean the 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 magnitude of that is beneficial for all parties and that's what it's it's fun man it's just um, you know. We get to hang out with the guys um, from the Wrestling News Source podcast. Ben is is, yes. a, a, is a brother. He's a true. He's like a you know. He's like a son for you. It, it's it's fun. It's it's enjoyable for us. We're going to partner, continue to partner with Wrestling News Source when we get down uh, to the pay per views and this starts opening back up again. You'll start seeing the logos and you'll start seeing the t shirts. You'll start seeing us doing everything everywhere all the time. Man, right. I'm super excited about it. And there's doors. I guess that's the thing. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say this again and I continue to say it before we spin this wheel, is that my true inspiration in continuing to do this is watching Anthony Green on a TV screen. You just rhymed. You're a poet and you don't even know it. Are you gonna are you gonna step into the battle with me and Mike Farrell? Uh no. Um uh, although I am uh linguistically layered in so many ways that uh, you could never imagine I could not ever want to spit a rhyme. <laughs> All right. I've been shuffling this for a good minute or so. I, I've probably hit shuffle a hundred times. My, it's completely uh, random. By the way, uh, can you tell, just before you spin this, can you tell the story about um, Ivar and the uh, Beverly Hills Okay, yeah, I think this is so. for the Ivar fake. We got to tell this story. Yeah, so Ivar, um, when he was on the independent wrestling scene before he was before Warby at Hands and any of that, before he broke his back in two spots twice, he was Handsome Johnny, Handsome Johnny Hayes, Handsome Johnny, Johnny Hanson, anything like that. Uh, he actually did a lot on like Sunday Night Heat back in the day, but his entrance music was the Beverly Hills theme song that. Da, 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 it Axel, every it that's happened the name of that. consistently at the Quincy Armory, where we would be setting the ring up, and the sound guy who was one of the promoters would be setting the sound up and would be testing the sound out. And as he'd play that song, Handsome Johnny would walk in the door <laughs> and would just would come in like puffing his hair up, dancing all dancing the way to the ring. It happened every month. <laughs> So Did he wait outside was, purposely? No, it just happened that way. He, <laughs> but he was always so. He was always one of the first people at the arena, though. So he was one of the few of the boys that were actually there during like sound check. You know what I mean? Guy, okay. um, he was that professional back then, even. 
But that was what that was. And that was just a little inside thing. I didn't expect him to actually post. I thought I knew it would make him laugh. Uh, it was it's funny. I think a lot. I think we have to blame Timber on some of that too. Yes, uh, she's been in I contact think, with him. I think unwittingly she talks to these sports <laughs> entertainers and pro wrestlers, and we don't even know. <laughs> well, I, I mean, he, he Ivar, I can say is um, is someone that ha- he never like. He's never not answered me. You know what I mean? What's well, he's a genuine. Yeah, human being that cares and like he, dude. The, like, the I wouldn't say me and him are friends. Like we've never hung out outside of a wrestling event. Well, but no, it's, we, I think, but it was always a hey, how's it going, and have a conversation. It wasn't just a hi and walk by. You know what I mean? Professional acquaintances with mutual respect for each other. Yeah. So Absolutely. he he actually ripped my shirt off at one time in front in front of like thousands of people. Is that the hot dog eating contest? That was the that was well that was at the hot dog safari. I don't know if that was the same year he kicked me and made me puke at the hot dog eating contest. But <laughs> so I, I'm a big guy. The PWF uh, NECW was at the time never had like the big shirt, so I never had a staff shirt with them. And Sheldon that day gave me my staff shirt and said, "JP, we had this made for you." And I appreciated that. And I put that shirt on and I wore that shirt with pride for about an hour. Listen, I, Bobby D, it's, I, I'm, I appreciate the fact that you enjoy listening to me while I'm in my car. That makes this, and, that makes this so much better for me right now. That, that you appreciate the fact that I sound like uh, your specific needle on your record player when you were 12 makes me <laughs> uh, feel great. <laughs> no, your sound actually wasn't bad. Okay, well that's, so, that's good. But, so I forget who jo- who handsome Johnny was wrestling, but there was a spot where they, we had to do they, like they had to be separated, and I'm going in to separate them. And he grabbed me by the collar of the shirt and ripped, and did not let go of the collar of the shirt until the shirt was off of me. <laughs> Completely. This hot dog safari, um, I don't, Bobby D, I don't know if you were ever there, uh, but this was uh, run by, it was at a horse track race, uh, sorry, dog track, um, and it was run by the Edelman brothers, who are like big around here as far as restaurant like reviews and stuff, and they they were radio personalities. They packed this place, and that wrestling was the entertainment. So there was literally like two, three thousand people watching me with my shirt off. It was so embarrassing. I was die. I was dead. There's a picture of me walking back through, um, and it's like I'm walking past some of the wrestlers' wives and girlfriends and stuff, and they're just snickering at me as I walk by with no shirt on. <laughs> really boosted your self esteem, didn't it? The handsome one, handsome Johnny. Oh, shit. Here we go. I'm glad you shared the music this time, but what is this? This is Miami relaxing Vice? music. Relaxing. Awesome. Um, oh, I'm so relaxed now. I can't wait. When I get done, I'm going to go tell everybody I'm so relaxed. <laughs> Who's it gonna be with slowing down? The names are all so close this week too, because there's a lot on there. I always love it when it slows down so slow that yeah, it, it literally creeps to the point of I don't know who's gonna win. Larry Guerra. Good job, Larry. <laughs> Larry, reach out to us in the next week or so. Let us know. Uh, send us your address and we'll get you right there. Boom. Ivar. Like that. That's a pretty cool figure. That's I the like Ivar it. basic. But the cool part about this figure is like, I'm going to order it off of um, a website that tends to get them before they're in the store. So you'll have it in your hands probably before it hits a store, store shelf. Mine was the ones that I've ordered have been all about uh, two weeks before. I literally saw them at the store. So it's, that's pretty that's, cool to have it before it hits the store. And I want to show this off again. I want to show off the plaque. 
the Irish whip that's hand carved, hand painted. Uh, this was done for me as a gift. Um, and if you guys wanted something done like this, you can get, he does customs. He has some on there that he sells stock. It's at www.mcgs. No, MCG solutions.org. Um, and out of Boston, Mass. He is a firefighter. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that or not, but a lot of the money goes to the Boston Firefighter Funds. Um, and it, it's it's unbelievable work. My mother has a few pieces hanging up in her house. And, um, it's not like neither of us podcast. have ever gotten a cease and desist order. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but it, um, but he does a lot of a lot of good stuff. So it's um, he has stock stuff up there that he sells and like signs and things of that nature. Uh, but if you wanted something custom done, obviously he can do. He does really good work, and it's all done by hand. JP, again, it's always another stellar episode. Even though I was in the vehicle in the middle of Butte, America. That's it, guys. It's been fun. Everybody, we'll see you next week. Uh, seven oh five Friday. Uh, that may change at some point, guys. Just to keep a heads up, but we'll um we'll let you know beforehand. Exactly. Again, as always, follow us at the number three Irish boys with a Z, and we'll see you next week. All right.